Hello, I'm Trudy Friend. I'm going to show you how to paint using water-soluble pencils a goat with horns. Some of them come dehorned, but this one has horns. So that I can show you the different textures between the horns and the fur of the uh, skull. I'm using ink-tense pencils. Water-soluble pencils are ideal for this sort of thing because there's quite a lot of drawing involved. So what I'm going to do at the moment is fill in a little bit using dry pencil on the dry paper to just put these patterns in position. I'm going to start with the eye area and then I'm going to choose a little bit of the bright colour which is saddle brown for the eye to just get that established. But I'm going to work above it to start with looking at these curves, the way the hair comes in from the light edge. So I'm working away from the edges down towards that eye. So it's across the skull this way pulling in here and they're all little pool strokes and we've got quite a dark piece of tone behind the ear there so I'm actually following the form of the ear by pulling it round and then working up and noticing the way it comes to a point and then working down the other side towards the eye and that gets me started and I can begin to see the shapes in of this pattern. So I'm working down behind that ear and then the eye where we have such strong bones underneath that we have to consider on an animal like this. It's much more visible the structure of the skull than it was on the donkey. So we've got tone in here and later on I'll be putting a shadow tone across all this. Above the eye here there's a little bit more dark just coming down. Here I'm doing a zigzag stroke that follows the form and starts coming down onto the eyelid and working across. Slightly uphill here to finish off the shape of the eye and then working down the other side and into this lighter area that comes next to that stripe that's so strong. So I'm pulling that way next, working downwards, round and out to the side. And again, I'm going to look at this shape here and just enlarge that slightly. Bring this one a bit larger. And a bit of tone down the centre eye there. A little bit of tick and flick here to take it up round that edge. And that's the top lid. I'm going to just do a few pull down strokes to suggest some of the eyelashes. And just put in the lower lid very gently and then I'm going to get the saddle brown and put that in for the eye. So that's a very gentle colour. We just cannot see much of that eye at all really because it's just under all those lashes. So I'm going to take a thin brush and just get that brown in place. It's an elongated eye at this angle and we have some dark tone in the corner there coming down and then back again for the lower part of the lid. And under here it's going to be darker because we have the iris coming in there so I'm just suggesting a few of the eyelashes there. Having got that in place, I can now carry on with the colour Payne's Grey and start filling in the main bulk of the animal while that dries. I've got dark behind the ear here. So these are pull down strokes and they're quite long because it, the goat does have longer hair in this area. I often say that I go a lot by the sound of my pencil on the paper because that's telling me the sort of stroke application I'm doing. And this is the elongated strokes coming down there. And I'm feeling a little bit of the unevenness, the twists and turns of the hair as I lightly go over this bit to fill in. There's a bit of shadow tone just behind the ear there, shadow underneath, coming into an interesting shape that allows me to fill in above it to get some of this dark. At this stage I'm just covering the area because I know I'll be going over this with water. And I'm 
following the form here as it changes from the pattern of the dark against the white stripe. These are pull down strokes here. And then back again with consideration for the cheeks. So it's changing the angle of application again and pulling down there. It's not just filling in a dark area. Um, some people, when they start out, are unsure how to apply the pencil. I always apply it directionally, uh, having relation to the skull or the shape of whatever is underneath the subject I'm drawing. So I'm thinking about changing the direction all the time to follow this form, because we have light hair cutting into some of these darks here as it gets more mottled. We're going down towards the mouth. So I'm thinking of the cheek there and following around the cheek. I'm thinking here about how it comes in underneath. There's a bit of tone coming in there. We're following the form around there and coming down towards the mouth and the attractive little beard that these goats have. They always fascinate me. We have three goats. They're nannies or a nanny and two youngsters and they have the beard even though they don't have the horns. We often watch their little beards and wonder really why goats have those. Now I'm going up so that I can relate that stripe to this one and I'll start up at the top near the horn and pull down again looking at the curves following the form of it as it goes over the eye pull down strokes and down between the eyes it's quite a wide band here actually so I'll widen that piece up and then we have what we call the rosettes it sort of goes back on itself and rosettes out from the eye and once it's done that, it changes direction again and starts coming out this way. There's a lot happening here. We want to look at all these things. This is rosetting out from here to join this one. And that's going that way. And then it's doing another twist here where it's coming down like that. And then out again into that main band. So quite a lot is happening there. And it's a good idea to look for these little details because they are defining that particular animal. These rosettes occur on many of them, but they are different. The, each animal has its own different marking and the way the hair goes. So I'm pulling down now, coming for this band here. And again, having regard for the structure underneath, going that way, knowing that these will eventually, some of them, merge into the others from the other band. And now I'm pulling down over the muzzle area, down towards the muzzle. And up into dark here. Again, following the form. Pulling back at the top from the edge. That's quite a wide band there. and back onto the main band down here. And under here there's a band that I can just see relates to the other eye. So I'm just going on my toes a bit there to put that in to meet up with that one. Then I see a little bit of the eye. Then there's a couple of pull downs for the eyelash. Then we come in for the area above the eye, the bone structure and the tone behind and out into the ear. And looking down now at this relationship here, if I bring this tone down, and cut in for the shape of the nostril, which is down and across. There's a dark piece there. We're coming all the way around the shape of the nose and down to there. Now I'm going to pause for a moment because this pencil is getting rather blunt and I don't want to spoil the detail around there and so I'll just get it sharpened.